previous video we were analyzing interpolation, now it's time to do extrapolation. Uh, it's pretty, actually, it's the exactly mathematical model, but in theory we're going to predict that future data, or not future about time, but let's say data that you do not know the ranges. Uh, as I said, the mathematical procedure is the same, but in theory I think it's a little bit more, let's say, risky to do that. So in theory, as I told you guys, you're going to calculate the slope as we did before. We're going to have this equation, let's plug the slope and one x y value, which we will know, and you just solve and get this master equation. One example, guys, well, let's say you have this point here and this point right here, and you, let's say you have 1.5 and 2.5 megapascals. And you want to know 3.5 megapascal data. Probably you will be wondering, uh, yeah, I did the experiment for 1.5 megapascal and the experiment for that 2.5 megapascals. Could I actually get data on 3.5? Yes and no. Depends on the process and you will see on when you're going to be successful and when you will be not that successful modeling that model. So you make this straight line, slope is here, you got your data here, your pair of data here. So supposedly you do this and as you can see it's a relative good fit in this case. So in this case you, you were like, let's say, successful with your model. But you will find a lot of time, and actually this one is tricky here, because, let me go back. At least you know this data, guys. You are modeling this, you may find, you see, or of you, if you have more data, which will be awesome, you know that this is linear and this is linear, well, why not think this is linear? But, let me do, imagine you say, this is linear, this is linear, and this is linear. You only have this range. Why would you suppose that the range you do not have is also linear? And this is pretty awesome. I love it because this happens a lot, especially when you're doing an exam, you're pressure, you do it very fast, and then you say, fuck this, I'm just going to interpolate or extrapolate. You do it and you get your answer wrong because you extrapolate data which did not fit the model. So, once again, extrapolation failure is way more common than interpolation. So, Okay, well, this is exactly what I told you guys. And let's do an interpolation. If you wanted to interpolate this, you will say, okay, give me this data, and you see that this line fits, and you have all your experimental data, which says you're okay. And the mistake commonly taken is that you will say, okay, then let's interpolate this, or extrapolate, sorry. Extra, of course, of course means going out. So imagine you want to get this value here, this x value. So you say, well, let's interpolate here. Your interpolation was okay. Let's do the extrapolation here. And you do it. And well, if you want to do the actual values here, the model values here, and calculate that difference, well, of course, this will be something around 6. This will be something around 1.5 you are almost four times wrong. And then if you get into experimental data, you will see that you are terribly mistaken. Other case, we've seen this one before, let's say this one here, this one here, this interpolation will be of course also very, very wrong. If you wanted to, let's say the two value here, the real value will be around one the theoretical value with your line or your model will be 0.3. So you can see that interpolation was not good and let's say you, you didn't notice that and you go for the extrapolation. So you extrapolate the data you want for. So with this model here, you check it out and you find out your model says the value is zero when in reality your model is something around, let's check it out. Yeah. This is the model, which says 0, and the actual value is minus 0 0.8. So you can see, of course, there is a lot of difference. 
And that's essentially when you fail to extrapolate. What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.